Hello, and welcome to Sophia's Roulette. I'm Sign Lyric, and tonight we have Dr. Tamana Kozla, author of the Feminist Manifesto and China, India, Russia, Russia Rise of the Euro-Asian Civilization, and we're all really excited about that. And tonight, the lecture is on liberal democracy, the final form of human governance. And I would like, I, it is my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Tamana Kozla, a brilliant star. I cannot wait to see shine brighter. So Tamana, if you are ready to go. Yes, of course. Love to be with you guys. Oh, always happy to have you here. Always happy. All right, we got you focused as a speaker. Let's do this thing. <laughs> Uh, so today, what we are looking at is uh, Fukuyama's, uh, Francis Fukuyama's uh, thesis on end of history. So in 1992, after the end of Cold War, he wrote a book, uh, The End of History and Last Man. And um, according to him, um, you know, liberal democracy is the last uh, phase of uh, human evolution. And there would be no further necessity of uh, any other uh, kind of um, uh, evolution. So socialist and communist governments are totally uh, past. And uh, what you need is liberal democracy. Now, um, uh, Fukuyama argues that history should be viewed as an evolutionary process. And that the end of history in this sense means liberal democracy is the final form of democracy. Now, as far as end of democracy, from where that came in, uh, well, it came from the ideologies of Hegel and Marx. So, who define human history as linear progression from one socio-economic epoch to another. Now, uh, now this is like, um, yeah. So, um, now the problem with his thesis starts from here. Uh, when he follows uh, Hegel and Marx. So let's consider first Fukuyama's use of philosophy of history. It is staggering to see the author of the thesis that history ends in dominance of liberalism seeking to derive support from Hegel, who is supposed to be anti-liberal by any chance. So what hap what's happening is that, you know, Hegel is against uh, representative government. And um, so, you know, the confusion is there, you know, where uh, he follows Hegel on, on this particular front. But the problem, even more problematic was that he was following Kujave's uh, interpretation of Hegel. So rather than uh, uh, looking at Hegel in um, his true sense, he followed another philosopher. He saw that, so Hegel uh, uh, is notorious for a spirited critique of liberalism. He saw representative democracy as a disaster, as giving political expression to the antagonistic interest in civil society, but without overcoming these antagonisms. Freedom properly so-called was more than mere individual will. It involved the transcendence of such immediate self-interest in a higher and more universal good. So according to Hegel and Marx, there's a higher good which has to be achieved and that is what the role of a state or a government is. So now, uh, but this is not what liberal democracy says, you know, it's here and now and you know, like, uh, so yeah, so, so the pursuit of self-interest which is central to classical economic and political liberalism is powerfully critiqued by Hegel. The result of such pure individualism cannot be a society. It is merely collection of petty private purposes. So this is what Hegel says, you know, as far as individualism so, is concerned. Hegel was perfectly serious in defending as a political superior alternative to liberalism, a monarchical state with a system of corporate representation and a universal class of civil servants. So this is what this is what the confusion is philosophy of writers. So yeah, so uh, sh surely we can learn from Hegel's dialectic and from the failures of the post-Hegelian philosophy of history is that the very notion of an end of history is pernicious. If we suppose that human freedom and individuation have developed in history to higher levels, then what is right? What gives us the right to assume that the given state of affairs today is unsurpassable? 
there can be no end to history in the most most important sense sense hegel gave to it so what hegel was following was not really what um, uh, uh, what actually was really happening so and that is what he was saying so some argue uh, that fukuyama presents american style democracy as the only correct political system and argues that all countries must inevitably follow this particular system of government however many fukuyama scholars claim this is misreading of his work fukuyama's argument is only that in future there will be no more and more governments that use a uh, framework of parliamentary democracy and that contain market of some sort so the end of history was never linked to specifically uh, american model of social or political organization that's what he said uh, following alexander kojev the russian french philosopher who inspired his argument he believed that european union more accurately uh, reflects what the world will look like at the end of history than the contemporary uh, us the eu's attempt to transcend sovereignty and traditional power politics by establishing a transitional rule of law is much more in line with post historical world than the american continuing belief in god national sovereignty and their military so um now let's look at the uh, argument in favor of fukuyama an argument in favor of fukuyama thesis is the democratic peace theory which argues that mature democracies do not go on go on war with each other and um, obviously his face criticism and now we have seen you know how it is really happening in mature democracies you know how us is uh, uh, more than 300 years of old democracy is um, uh, looking at the whole issue of war how eu is responding to ukraine for example so Uh, so you know um so i guess uh, he has been um, the person who is looking at the whole concept uh, in a way that um, liberal democracies are the true bet but uh, that's really not what's happening now now why is this happening what, what are the issues which the current uh, century is raising is what uh, fukuyama needs to address now you know in academia what happens really is that um, people like rolls uh, kimlicka uh, charles taylor you know many of them who are basically extending not charles taylor sorry i i mean he's a communitarian but uh, as far as both of these philosophers are concerned they have been they have extended the um, liberal democratic arguments in their own way so uh, you know as individuals are autonomous etc etc so in academia these kind of um, are uh, scholars are encouraged more rather than the ones who are coming up with new arguments so you know that's a whole problem now um, as far as the criticism is concerned now one of the major criticism which came from came for him though he had heard derrida's uh, lectures you know fukuyama as a young scholar uh, uh, comes in specter of marx uh by derrida and derrida criticized fukuyama as a come lately leader of philosopher alexander kojev who in tradition of leo leo strauss in the 1950s already had described the society of us as realization of communism and said that public intellectual celebrity of fukuyama and mainstream popularity of his book were symptoms of right wing cultural anxiety about ensuring death of marx in criticizing fukuyama celebration of economic and cultural hegemony of western liberalism derrida said and i quote him here for it must be cried out at a time when some have the audacity to neo evangelize in the name of ideal of a liberal democracy that has finally realized itself as the ideal of human history never have violence inequality exclusion famine and economic ex- ex- oppression affected as many human human beings as in the case of liberal democracy 
instead of singing the advent of ideal of liberal democracy and the capitalist market and euphoria of the end of history instead of celebrating end of ideologies and the end of great emancipatory discourses let us never neglect this obvious mac macroscopic fact made up of innumerable singular sites of suffering no degree of uh, progress allows one to ignore that never before in absolute figures have so many men women and children been subjugated starved or exterminated from earth so you know now now we have new issues new challenges which are coming up you know for example during that time uh, when he wrote this book he did not realize that the the whole um, uh, problem of uh, radical islam so you know you know the whole issue of isis and you know all these kind of uh, problems which arose in 2000 2001 um, the the attack on america by you, by this and you know like uh, iraq war etc and you know the, the rise of china russia um you know and so uh, fukuyama did not realize, realize that you know the current problems would be major problems you know for example the covid issue you know how the world unites on this issue and um, uh, how china is doing so well uh, economically and you know like uh, it's still a communist country you know so therefore derrida said the end of history is essentially a christian history it's consonant with current discourse of the pope on the european community destined to become a christian state or a super state but this community would still belong therefore to some holy alliance that fukuyama practiced an intellectual slate of hand trick by using empirical da data whenever suitable to his message so uh, samuel p huntington for example you know again his criticism in clash of civilization he expanded the essay into a clash of civilization the remaking of world order in the essay and book huntington argued that temporary conflict between ideologies is being replaced by the ancient conflict between civilizations the dominant civilization decides the form of human government and these will not be constant he especially singled out islam which he described as having bloody borders uh as far as farid farid zakaria is called the events the end of the end of end of history you know it's like it's end of end of history so yeah uh, so fukuyama do did dis describe uh, islam uh, briefly but he argued that islam is not an imperialist force like stalinism and fascism but probably he did not realize that it is a major threat and it's like spread you know you you look at uh, african countries for example you know the way they are suffering from terrorism you look at south asia uh, you know uh, india pakistan for example you know like uh, pakistanis are themselves suffering from um, uh, uh, terrorism you know it's like islamist killing islamist so you know like um, every second day they have a, a bomb attack or suicide bombers you know who are like attacking them so probably he did not uh, understand the uh, basic problem and also what i would like to say here is that you know like for example you know uh, he is yet to respond to despots you know for example in middle east you have msb you know for example you know the the despotic uh, uh, you know like uh, right now we are seeing is is israel you know what's happening there what's happening in iran you know so probably he did not realize that you know the world does not end with liberal democracy it's much more than that um you know and um, and russia's uh, new rise you know and the fact that you know they are looking at the whole issue in a, a new light you know they are understanding that they need to expand and you know not, not let need to expand in in a big way so you know it has realized that you know soviet union had many satellite countries and you know so uh, these satellite countries need to be brought back into russia so uh, you know um, this is what um, the whole yeah, issue is now uh, uh, slovenian philosopher slevok zizek 
argues that Fukuyama's ideas that we have reached the end of history is not wholly true. Zizek points out that liberal democracy is linked to capitalism. However, the success of capitalism in authoritarian nations like China and Singapore shows that the link between capitalism and democracy is broken. So, you know, like, um, you know, how does that, that really happens? You know, that has, that has to be really understood and, you know, studied well. You know, people have not really understood the fact that, you know, China is doing, um, you know, for example, you know, um, uh, Xi Jinping um, as a communist thinker, you know, he has written several lectures and, you know, he's written several books on, on this particular aspect. And um, so, uh, you know, like, um, you know, how they are adjusting, you know, how they are uh, uh, being powerful, you know, how... Uh, right now they are rising up as power you know for example in the tension between ukraine and russia they have been invited to uh, uh, you know discuss then as far as um, uh, you know we have just seen that iran and uh, saudi arabia you know who had been uh, unfriendly since past 12 13 years you know the, china has come in china has come in in a big way in africa for example you know china is trying to spread itself in south asia with bhutan nepal etc so uh, yeah so these kind of things are there uh, now what he uh, fukuyama suggested was that the life after history might be sad you know uh, what does that mean uh, life after uh, history is sad when all political efforts were committed to endless solving of technical problems environmental concerns and the satisfaction of sophisticated consumer demands we might feel nostalgia for courage, imagination, and idealism, you know, because, you know, the history has ended. So, you know, you don't have any problems according to him. You know? So there, they, there are really no problems which uh, people uh, uh, will really respond, respond to because, you know, liberal democracy has already answered all of them and you don't need any more of them because it's the end of history. So uh, Fukuyama thinks he knows what, that something is, and his answer is summed up in this title for recognition. Uh, so, in uh, for example, in the next book which came out in uh, I I don't know the date actually, but the identity, the demand, and for dignity and the politics of resentment, the demand satisfaction with the global liberal order, Vladimir Putin, Osama bin Laden, Xi Jinping, Black Lives Matter, Me Too, Gay Marriages, ISIS, Brexit resurgent European nationalism, anti-immigration political movements, campus identity politics, uh, Chinese communism, uh, Russian revolution, um, etc. Uh, and, and the election of Donald Trump, you know, and so these kind of things, you know, uh, are what, what are, uh, according to uh, Fukuyama, are of interest. So he's not really oblivious of what's really happening in the world you know he is responding to it so we really can't say that he's not saying he's not noticing what the me too movement is you know so um, which uh, women and uh, uh, LS, uh, lgbt community are facing you know and you know as as far as a me too movement is concerned so um, yeah so uh, it also explains the Protestant Reformation, the French Revolution, the Russian Revolution, Chinese communism, the civil rights movement, the women's movement, multiculturalism, which happened in the 2000, after 2000, uh, sorry, 19, uh, 1990 afterwards, and the thought of Luther King, Rousseau, Kant, Nietzsche, Freud, and Simone de Beauvoir. Uh, so, so, uh, but obviously he's not very clear about Bubu. So, you know, he hasn't been able to understand that particular aspect and he hasn't responded to feminism in a big way. So that's what he really needs to do, you know, um, as far as the radical feminists are concerned, you know. So, uh, you know, how does end of, uh, how does end of history uh, respond to the feminist movement? you know like and um, you know how does it respond to rise of um, russia and china and india and um, you know these are challenges and you know the, and the right wing movement you know how how the worldwide rise of be it europe be it us be it uh, anywhere you know 
uh, the rise of right but equally what is happening is responding of um, uh, uh, left to right so the campus politics for example you know you see the rise of um, uh, you know you, you see the rise of uh, um, uh, you, you see the rise of uh, left movement in campuses, for example, you know, I mean, as a, as a, as a professor, I've seen that, you know, uh, young adults are extremely uh, interested in, um, in the fact that, you know, you have uh, these uh, Marxist uh, ideologies, and, you know, so as far as a, a whole infrastructure is concerned, and, you know, like the whole political thought is concerned, you know, it's, it's in India, for example, you know, you have uh, uh, BJP, for example, you know, the rightist political extremist party, you know, but um, uh, still, you know, as far as we, we are concerned in academia, we see a lot of um, uh, leftist uh, groups which have come up and, you know, we have the Naxalite problem where lately, you know, there were like around 15 policemen who were killed uh, in Orissa. Uh, so, you know, um, so they have, uh, though CPI, Communist Party of India, has lost the national party character, it has still won the hearts of many of the uh, young people. So it's still in vogue. You know, you can't say that, you know, they are not a national party and, you know, they are they are not in vogue. They are, they have won the hearts of many young people and many young people are supporting uh, the left part, left uh, movement. So, you know, we, uh, and I mean, I'm sure about campuses uh, in US as well, you know, this is what is happening, you know, Columbia University, etc. In any way known as um, uh, a leftist uh, university. So, so that's the whole thing. I mean, I think I'll stop there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Samana. Do, I do have a couple of questions because uh, at one at one point you said you resolved, uh, you know, that he does address, you know, these horrors in the world that that apparently, you know, in the course in the course material that I looked through, he just sort of calls aberration. And and can you please go over again how he addresses that exactly? Uh, so, um, as far as his uh, latest book is concerned, in that he has looked at the whole issue of identity politics. So, you know, like the whole black black movement, the uh, rise of uh, Me Too movement, the rise of, um, uh, one second, I'll just tell you, yeah. So, uh, Osama Bin Laden, Xi Jinping's rise, uh, ISIS, Brexit, European Union, etc cetera, etc cetera. so he has been able to address these issues so you really can't say that he's oblivious to uh, these issues these are issues which are of concern and probably he might just expand it to see you know how liberalism can address this you know so that's that is going to be the main challenge to him to see how uh, you know like um, you know you know, um, you know i mean as far as i am concerned as far as the end of history is concerned, I would see there would there's a need of uh, a combination of uh, socialism and liberalism uh, in in uh, uh, historical assessments, you know. And uh, what we really need is um, that um, uh, these things need to be uh, addressed, uh, and um, you know we need to take help from. Uh, different ideologies um, and there is no need. I mean, I feel that, you know, I, I agree with Hegel here that, you know, there is no end to history. Uh, you know, it has to, it, there is a linear progress. So, you know, as far as spiritualism is concerned, you know, I mean, I, I'm adding it myself because he hasn't added it. So, you know, I'm not talking about spiritual movements. I'm talking about spiritual, I'm not talking about religious movements. I'm talking about spiritual movements, where which look at the whole concept of, um, uh, you know, like um, the uh, rise of the individual. So, you know, a rise of the soul, you know. And I guess the more purer we get, the more purer, in the more pure way we'll be able to address the environmental issue, you know and uh, you know women's issue you know where we will respect individuals individuality is something which is agreed upon by me as well as the liberals and you know i mean 
I'm on their side on this particular aspect. But as far as end of history is concerned, we need to evolve more. You know, we have to address issues like uh, um, um, external uh, um, challenges, you know, which might be in the space, for example, you know, and uh, uh, so and those kind of things we need to address, you know, and uh, till the time that doesn't happen, this history will keep on evolving. And uh, it's it's not just, uh, it's very simple to say economic democracy and political democracy will end, will be end of history. It's, it's very simplest. Okay, all right. Uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, and and my other my other question, which actually came up in the group today, is is the the way he looks at history seems to be very linear. Is is that your understanding as well? And and if so, why why do you suppose that is? I'm sorry, I I didn't get the word. What what is it? Uh, his his view of history seems to be very linear linear instead of cyclical. Um. I guess it's linear uh, because he is looking at uh, the rise from the platonic times to now. So, you know, he is looking at the whole issue from th that perspective. But um, I guess it is it is linear uh, because it is it is not circular. Per personally, I feel, you know, I mean, I, I personally feel that it, it is going to evolve more. So, you know, and it's, it is going to borrow from many of our older thinkers, you know, and, but, you know, newer people are going to come in, you know, who speak about many other things like ozone layer, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, you know, the environmental issue, you know, how the West is dominating uh, uh, the uh, newer nations, you know, when they are the ones who are like uh, responsible for carbon emission, for example, you know, and um, so, you know, the way they are trying to dominate. So, you know, how the South Asian, for example, countries would come up with new solutions to these issues, you know, so that um, people don't um, exploit them, you know, because after all, it's not their fault. But we have to have technologies which look at climate changes in a particular way, you know. So most of these things have been done by West. You know, now they are like signing agreements, etc. You know, but like the fact is, you know, so they have to help uh, these the newer nations with the carbon emission policies. Uh, you know, and um, nuclear. Um, I, I mean, nuclear issues and other issues. Sorry, that also came into my mind. But that as a technology which helps in uh, 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 electricity, etc. You know, it's it's a good technology. So yeah. Thank you very much, Tamana. I am very grateful. I, I got to tell you, like we read this guy this morning. We we went over his stuff in in the morning meeting, and and I well, first of all, like it seems like a pretty simple jump for me to to just say that if you combine, you know, communism and capitalism, that that you'll have a system that actually works for the people you know, instead of the people working for the system. And 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 again, you know, coming back to those major events that, that he just sort of writes off as aberrations, like like if you're going to ignore that, that's that's kind of a problem, don't you? Oh, and and you're telling me that he doesn't ignore it, but but I still don't really understand exactly how he addresses it other than their aberrations. You know? I guess because he has been challenged majorly in the academia. You know, his uh, whole concept has been, uh, uh, you know, like uh, made a major, he, he made a major issue um, about the whole issue of, you know, because the rise of China and Russia, for example, and, you know, Russians not giving up on the communist, uh, uh, though it's, it's said to be a liberal democracy after 1991, it's still continued its uh, despotic um, uh, structure, you know, Radhamir Putin, for example, you know, and so, so that Xi Jinping. So I guess, um, you know, uh, it, uh, his, his answers to these problems are itself liberal, you know, that liberal democracy can answer these issues. So, but we need to really uh, research on these issues, that, like, what would be the solution to these problems? You know, how would we address, for example, the whole issue of radical Islam? You know, can liberal democracy address it? So a separate book on this particular issue needs to be thought about. 
you know if in academia we can really think about it that you know how radical islam the answer to radical islam is really in liberal democracy or can uh, or do we need to evolve in evolve historically to address these issues you know so for example multiculturalism you know it, it it's a good thing but it's a problem as well you know because you know many people would support radical islam for example they would not say anything to people who are following uh, uh, islam uh, not ra- islam but radical islam you know people like isis and um, you know syrian terrorists for example etc so um, i guess it's easy to say that you know liberal democracy will address it but how much how much would they be able to address it is yet to be seen okay all right well thank you very much so so he he is actually advocating for us to solve these problems not to just call them aberrations and consider it all good because because that's definitely the feeling i got when i was going through the source material <laughs> um but i'm very grateful for you for you coming here today tamana like i am always just so incredibly grateful for your existence and your brilliance and and everything that you are and again you you have two books uh coming out uh the feminist manifesto and china india russia the rise of euro asian civilization uh i don't see any questions in the chat so so i guess we can wrap it up if that's okay with you sure of course all right i love you so much tamana thank you so much thank you thank you